Sony and Neumann mics, they don't just sound different. They feel different. They're, they're like two voices uh, telling the same story, but in their own accent. So why? Let's break that down today. Stick around. From the mind of Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov. Hey, first check this out. There's a new cover for my book, The Modern VoiceOver Career Owner's Manual, that drops May 15th for Kindle, and paperback, yes, paperback, drops on May 22nd. There's a link in the description below. Check that out. Now, as most viewers of this channel would agree, there's something undeniably classic about a Neumann microphone. So, what you have is that sound, that rich, velvety, dimensional sound. Velvety in the mids, especially the low mids. It's a sound that's graced countless records, voiceovers, and broadcasts for decades. And when you get in front of one and you hear yourself through it, you just know that Neumann didn't just set the standard. They defined the sound of the 20th century voice. They are the mics that all other mics, all other mics get compared to. But today, we're diving into a lesser-known mystery, the signature sound of Sony mics. Now, not the C800G you hear about in hip-hop circles so much, but there's a larger story about voicing culture and a surprising twist in microphone history. Now, let's just start. Let's just start with the basics. Neumann. Neumann has been making microphones since the 1920s. I mean, their designs, especially the, the big three, U47, U67, U87, are known for a strong but tasteful presence boost and a lush mid-range. And in particular, Neumann mics tend to emphasize that low mid-region. We're talking about really like, yeah, 200 to 500 hertz. And that's where body, warmth, and a sense of authority live in the human voice. It flatters deeper tones, and it adds gravitas to almost anything. But Sony, by comparison, entered the mic game much later, beginning in the 1950s. And here's where things get interesting. While some early Sony condenser mics were clearly inspired by Neumann Design C48, I'm looking at you, many of them developed their own sonic identity. And it turns out that Sony mics tend to favor the upper mid-range, roughly, yeah, in that 2 to 6K region. And that's the area where presence meets clarity. It's the forwardness of speech, the articulation in vowels, and the texture of emotion. And while it still feels mid-rangey, it's a different kind of richness. It's less of a warm blanket and more of a polished spotlight. So why the difference? All right, part of it, this is my theory, part of it may be biological. Because on average, Male voices, Japanese male voices, are pitched about 10 to 20 hertz higher than German male voices. Why? One big reason is height. German men are on average about 3 inches or about 10 centimeters taller than Japanese men. Taller people also tend to have longer vocal tracks and longer vocal folds, which means lower resonances and deeper pitch. And in this case, a 3 inch height difference actually correlates really, really well with about uh, two millimeters longer uh, of vocal cords, right? So, which you guessed it, would uh, also correspond to a fundamental pitch difference of 10 to 20 hertz. So, voila, right? So, if you're a Japanese engineer designing a mic and you're tuning it to, to ear, right, to find the most flattering sound, you're probably working with local voices that live slightly higher in the frequency spectrum. That mid-range sweet spot is going to land somewhere higher than it would for a German engineer. So also, also female Japanese voices, for cultural and biological reasons, tend to average around a, a fundamental tone that is 100 to 150 hertz higher than the average German male, which would correspond to about an octave or more difference in pitch. <laughs> Even up to two octaves. It could go up to like C4, actually. So in other words, Sony's voicing, wasn't just inspired by Neumann, it was adapted. It wasn't copied, it was calibrated. It was calibrated for the Japanese voice. Now, here's the kicker. A lot of vintage Sony mics have this lightness in the low mids that actually makes a lot of sense when you consider the recording technology of the time. Now, most of these mics were designed to hit analog tape, 
right? An analog tape has its own sonic footprint. It rounds off the top end. It thickens the bottom, especially, especially in the low mids. Right, especially in the low mids, tape naturally adds a density, a soft saturation that kind of piles up quickly. So, if you're designing a mic to be used with tape, it makes sense to hold back some of those low mids. Otherwise, you know, things could get a little muddy, right? Especially in the absence of EQ. And that means that Sony's decision to kind of make the, the low mids a little scooped, right? It wasn't just about matching vocal pitch, it was also about anticipating the medium. It's kind of an early hybrid voicing between source and signal chain. And guess what? It works. It works great. So you hear it. You definitely hear that sound in, in mics like the Sony C37A and 37B, and of course, in the C800G. And there's the humble C355. There's this clarity in the midrange, a brightness that doesn't feel brittle, but, you know, and, and there's just enough low end to stay grounded but not so much that ever feels bloated. And it's as if a Sony, it's as if Sony engineered their mics to let the tape do the final seasoning, right? So I love that. So what's the takeaway? What is the big takeaway, right? Neumann gave us the sound of warmth and body and, and broadcast. And Sony gave us the sound of presence and intimacy and articulation. Both are, both are rich, both are mid-focused, but they live in different zones of the mid-range spectrum. And perhaps that's why, perhaps that's why a Sony mic can feel like, you know, instantly a little bit familiar, but just different enough to make you lean in. So <laughs> this whole thing, right? I'm thinking this wasn't about design. It was about people, biology, culture, and signal flow. It's a reminder that the tools we use aren't just technical. They're human, tuned by ear, shaped by voice, and influenced by the world in which they're made. So thank you for, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching my brand here. <laughs> so what do you think of the Sony mic family sound, right? Pretty cool, huh? So leave a comment and let me know. All right. Until next time, love many, trust few, and always cut the cards. This is Mark Yoshimoto Nemkov, Fading to Black.